Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name's Ella, but I go by Scientific Snitch on the socials. I'm 35 days away from graduating with a Bachelor's of Science in Clinical Kinesiology, and today we are demystifying bulking and cutting. Now before we dive in, I'd like to define some key concepts. Calories are defined as a unit of energy equivalent to the heat energy needed to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius. So calories are units of energy. Now logically, when you eat enough calories and you're getting enough energy to maintain your current body, then you will not need more or less energy or calories to sustain yourself. As a result of consuming enough energy to maintain, your body will not be stimulated to break down any fat storage for energy, a process known as lipolysis, nor will your body be triggered to store any of that energy you consume as fat, a process known as lipogenesis. And just to drive the point home, lipogenesis cannot occur because there's no extra energy to store. You're eating enough to maintain your current body fat percentage. So combining the definition of maintenance calories in your dictionary with basic physiology, maintenance calories can be defined as eating enough calories calories to match your total daily energy expenditure based on your body weight so as to ensure that lipolysis and lipogenesis are not occurring to such an extent that you are no longer maintaining your current body fat percentage. Not only can we explain what maintenance calories is and why it occurs, we can also further define a caloric surplus as eating enough calories to stimulate lipogenesis and a calorie deficit as eating less calories to stimulate lipolysis. Now after all these definitions, you may be wondering how muscle growth comes into play. Well, based on a handful of randomized control trials and studies on individuals individuals in a calorie deficit, consuming enough protein and participating in resistance training preserved or added muscle mass despite being in an energetic or caloric deficit. This demonstrates that the addition or preservation of muscle mass is not necessarily an energy dependent but protein and stimulus dependent process. To provide a powerful example here, let me introduce you to exercise interventions on patients who underwent bariatric surgery. Briefly, patients who are diagnosed with morbid obesity or severe metabolic syndrome are candidates for bariatric surgery, a major procedure that remodels the digestive tract to promote a calorie deficit and weight loss. However, the reorganization of the digestive tract combined with the extreme caloric deficit that is required both before and after the surgery has a tendency to cause significant amounts of muscle loss and malnutrition. With all that being said, now that you understand who bariatric patients are, what happened when they controlled their diet in a calorie deficit and participated in resistance training? Bariatric patients who participated in resistance training did not only retain some muscle mass, but actually could regain some of the muscle mass they lost during surgery recovery. Ultimately, this data powerfully demonstrates how muscle growth may require energy but is not an energy dependent process as even after bariatric surgery and extreme caloric and nutritional deficit, individuals could still retain and even gain muscle mass given the proper protein and stimulus. Even though muscle growth may require a certain amount of energy to occur, that requirement can be easily met even in a calorie deficit. If a calorie deficit that stimulates lipolysis does not prevent muscle growth, then triggering lipogenesis via a surplus does not necessarily mean you're going to optimize the process either. This smoothly sets up the primary argument here, which is that bulking and cutting are not beneficial for muscle growth. So let's discuss the issues with both sides, starting with bulking. According to a 2023 regression analysis of data collected from a randomized cohort who consumed a small to large caloric surplus, the rate of fat gain was significantly higher and surpassed the increase of muscle gain during both the small and large caloric surplus. This would suggest that bulking in such a way that you put on a noticeable amount of body fat will not result in an increased rate of muscle growth compared to eating at maintenance calories. This statement it makes a lot of sense when we go back to the initial string of logic that I started this video with. If you eat more than your body needs, then lipogenesis will occur and your body will store those extra calories as body fat. Remember, given your current muscle mass, a given stimulus, and a given amount of energy, your muscles can only store oh so much glycogen for energy and your body will only use oh so much protein towards muscle building. After that, extra carbs will be stored as fat and extra protein may be stored as fat excreted or used to build longer hair and nails. Basically, if you're eating so much that you're storing body fat, then you're not using that energy towards building muscle. Now on top of bulking being primarily conducive of fat storage and not muscle growth, eating an excess of calories can have a slew of adverse effects on your mental and physical health. From insulin resistance to your self-image, at the end of the day, gaining extra body fat will not result in a net positive. And in fact, when you do gain that extra fat tissue, you will likely have to cycle into a calorie deficit or a cut in order to restore your health and self-image. Now when you do cycle into that calorie deficit to cut, you are almost guaranteed to hinder your ability to optimally grow. You see, although muscle growth itself doesn't depend on energy, optimizing muscle growth does. Specifically, the amount of energy necessary to maintain your fat storage. You see, if your body is using energy to release fatty acids from your fat storage, is struggling to replenish muscle glycogen, and is lacking optimal quantities of protein, then you aren't using your energy and resources to train and grow muscle optimally. Overall, 
overall, if the goal is to optimize muscle growth and grow as much muscle as possible in a given period of time, then you do not want to be in a calorie deficit where you are taking calories away from the amount of carbohydrates, protein, or fat that you need to sustain your body and by extension, fuel and grow muscle. So what diet should you follow to optimize muscle growth? Well, putting aside power lifters who are trying to get to a specific weight class or bodybuilders who are trying to get lean enough to hop on stage, you'll want to follow the kind of diet that allows you to always be at a healthy body fat percentage optimizing muscle growth. So this does not mean overeating and triggering lipogenesis because doing this would eventually lead you to require a deficit in order to stimulate lipolysis in order to get rid of the fat that you gain, which as explained would hinder your ability to grow because you're taking calories away from carbs, fat, or protein, which would fuel your muscle growth. So as defined earlier, if your body fat is not changing, then you're not stimulating lipolysis or triggering lipogenesis. So you would be eating a maintenance diet. So let's break this protocol down start to finish. First, you need to be at a healthy body fat percentage because you're not gonna grow continuously and healthily if you're at 2% body fat or 49% body fat. So what's a healthy body fat percentage? Well, here is a chart. I'll leave it up for a few minutes while I speak just so you guys can take note of it. Now, unless you're some kind of bodybuilding or fitness coach, you probably haven't gauged body fat percentage by eye very often. So I recommend learning how to use a manual fat caliper as it's a little cheaper than other methods like the DEXA and it's fairly simple. If you've never taken your body fat percentage with fat calipers before, I recommend first asking your doctor to make sure it doesn't contraindicate any conditions you have. Then when you get the caliper, I recommend flexing first, pinching the skin to see what muscle and fat feels like, and then relax and pinch the skin to take a measurement. Overall, using a fat caliper will make it a little more quantitative rather than qualitative and relying on your eye alone. Once you can determine you're at a healthy body fat percentage, I recommend eating at maintenance calories and adjusting that number over time as you gain muscle mass. Now all this brings me to the most frequent question I get asked when I recommend this protocol. How do you adjust your calories? Isn't it impossible to know exactly how much to adjust by? Well, that's the beauty of this protocol. It's impossible to know the exact number to adjust by. And because muscle growth is such an extremely slow process, it's not so much about increasing the amount of calories by a specific number, but about maintaining your current healthy body fat percentage. To keep track of this body fat percentage, I don't only recommend calipers, but taking a picture of your physique each morning and comparing it over the course of a month. Once you generally figure out how many calories doesn't have an impact on your body fat percentage, then keep eating that amount, keep training, eating protein, and slowly increase that maintenance amount by two to 5% every few months or so. Now, two to 5% of your maintenance calories is a very small number. This may equate to an extra apple or rice crispy treat, so I don't recommend being super strict about it because ultimately at the end of the day, the main goal here is to maintain your current body fat percentage, not your calories. Overall, using basic physiological principles, bulking and cutting is just cycling body fat, it is not helping you gain extra muscle. By eating maintenance calories and adjusting that number as you gain muscle, you will slowly and continually grow muscle optimally without ever having to negatively impact your physical and mental health by cutting and bulking. Now, I hope this video helped you and taught you something meaningful about your body. If you enjoy this type of content and want more, make sure you subscribe and like and comment down below any other topics you'd like me to do a deep dive in.